It's the easiest job in journalism to find a victim of Sahato and his army of killers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mari, mari. <laughs> Hello, how are you today? Every back alley in Jakarta reveals a story of the dead, the maimed and the missing. Today, Ibu Tuti's son is just one more stern face on yet another missing poster in Jakarta. Ibu Tuti's son simply disappeared in 1996 when the military arrested him during a crackdown against the emerging democratic movement. He wasn't well known, she wasn't well connected, there was nothing she could do. Ya, cara ibu sama teman-temannya pergi ke dukun, kalau orang sana dukun apa namanya itu ya. Uh, di, dia lihat, dia bilang itu anak ibu masih ada, kan gitu. Adalah, uh, Under Sahato, a clairvoyant was as good as any other form of legal redress. Today, not much has changed. A new government is in place, democratically elected, but without the central pillar of a democracy a legal system to provide justice or at least an answer to a mother's simple question. Ibu warga negara Indonesia asli. Jadi hukum itu harus sama biar berpangkat, biar berbintang itu harus sama hukum. Kalau perasaan ibu, ibu ini enggak ngerti hukum. Harus dia itu yang mengerti hukum, yang lebih ngerti dari ibu. Anak ibu ini hidup atau mati, ibu harus tahu. In a city with almost daily protests against the apparent legal immunity of former dictator Sahato and his military cronies, a dance protest is a new twist. But the raw politics are never far away. These are the young people that the military tortured, raped and imprisoned in their final attempts to cling to power. They were the army's greatest enemy then and now. Bass guitarist Pranowo and drummer Jacobus Kuniawan were imprisoned for nearly four years until released by the new government. Many of their friends, including Ibu Tuti's son, were killed or simply disappeared. Actions which Sahato and his army may yet come to regret. Sahato now appears untouchable, protected from his people by these police and soldiers who permanently surround his house. But it's a barrier which Jacobus Kurniawan may break through. The government's legal action against Sahato has collapsed. But today, Sahato's prisoner may be on the verge of doing what the state has been unable to do drag him and his generals into the justice system. Jacobus and eight others from the formerly banned People's Democratic Party, the PRD, are launching the country's first private legal action against Sahato and 11 generals for false imprisonment and human rights abuses. Jacobus, can you forgive, can you forgive uh, Sahato, but can you forgive the intelligence officers and, uh, and, uh, and the army? No, 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 it's not about forgive or not, like and dislike. It's about how to build, how to build a, a legal system, how to build a democratization process in Indonesia. So I repeat 
this is not about revenge but this is our task our task our duty as uh, one of political forces in Indonesia who have responsibility to the people the calm domesticity of this group house come party headquarters belies the trauma that these young people have endured 58 members of the PRD were arrested in 96 for daring to form a political party. 28 of them never returned. The ones that did survived the most horrific torture. 13 were in prison for subversion. Today, the former inmates are preparing to return to the same Jakarta courthouse where their show trial had been held. This time, not with fear, but with hope. Our case is uh, the only, the last case to charge Suharto because of his political crime. After Suharto trial uh, was banned by judge. This is the, the last chance. <laughs> This is the third time the PRD lawyers have presented this case. Like many controversial cases in Indonesia, it's been subjected to continual adjournments. Maka ujian bagi kami untuk menyampaikan rasa kekecewaan dan protes keras kami terhadap jalannya proses persidangan perkara ini. A month ago, the PRD case was regarded as little more than a sideshow. But since then, the state case against Sahato has collapsed after the judges surprisingly ruled him unfit for trial. Just one of a string of controversial judgments this year. What appeared to be watertight cases of embezzlement and corruption brought by the government against military and business figures linked to the old regime have all failed in the courts failed with unrelenting and suspicious regularity. Dengan segala rasa pesimistis, kami sedikit merasa yakin bahwa pasti Bapak Majelis Hakim yang terhormat tidak akan sudi untuk menjadi boneka-boneka para penguasa, apalagi menjadi perpanjangan tangan kekuatan rejim Orde Baru yang ternyata kekuatannya menyebar ke beberapa sektor untuk bersiap-siap memukul balik kekuatan pro demokrasi. Satu, dalam On its merits, the PRD case is strong. With natural pessimism, the lawyers have rated their chances as at least 50-50. But across town, a more informed group would provide even more sober odds. In the government's ongoing battle to assert the rule of law over the army and the old regime, this is probably the most important group that the government has established in the 12 months since it came to power the joint inquiry team into corruption. Its brief is to investigate compromised members of the judiciary. Disturbingly, it's confirmed suspicions not just about minor courts, but about every level of the system, including the Supreme Court itself. Inquiry member, H.S. Dillon. What are these men accused of doing? What are these judges accused of doing? They're simply accused of very straightforward leg, asking for money, getting money and issuing verdicts in the favour of those who have given them money. A very blatant uh, exercise in what you would say would be um, dispensing justice to the highest bidder. A legal action by the Supreme Court prevents inquiry chairman Adi Andoyo from detailed comment. But his impressions about the state of the justice system are clear enough. What confidence do you have in the police? I'm confident. <laughs> what confidence do you have in the in the judges? In the judges, not not so big, eh? <laughs> not so big. And the prosecutors? Prosecutors also not so big. Eh? And Doyo now believes that corruption amongst judges, including the most senior in the land, is now so endemic it will take a generation to clean up the courts. That's a very, uh, a very depressing analysis from 
given given your position. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So there's there's little. That you I'm can not do. optimistic. I'm on the contrary. I'm pessimistic. That prognosis is particularly unsettling for H.S. Dillon. Kita kok belum dapat ini ada moral outreach dari masyarakat itu. Dylan is also a senior member of the Indonesian Human Rights Commission. He knows that without courts to prosecute them in, the dozens of cases he's now preparing against the military are all at stake, as is the stability of a fledgling democracy. If he and you and others don't succeed, which it doesn't look like you're going to at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Then that means we will be in this mess for quite some time to come. Then you will see, I think, uh, something akin to Russia then. Meaning? Meaning lawlessness, uh, what, what my <laughs> senior friend had said two weeks ago, that is governmentless right now. You don't see any effective government. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing right now is this uh, tug of war between uh, the army and uh, the president. And it's a tug of war with Dylan in the middle. Perkenai itu di studio kita telah hadir pada malam hari ini. Yang pertama Bapak Dr. Insinyur HS Dilon. Para pemirsa sudah mengenal beliau. Beliau adalah pengamat eh, ekonomi, pengamat pertanian dan juga pengamat HAM. It's probably more his expertise in rice production than in human rights that guarantees Dylan a berth on many Indonesian television programs. But his high public profile is now affording some slim protection in the dangerous challenge he's currently posing to the Indonesian military. Dylan is one of the main investigators of Indonesian military figures accused of war crimes in East Timor, many of them still serving officers. It's an investigation that poses the greatest threat yet to the military and the greatest test to the integrity of the legal system. Dylan has now finalised the case files dealing with military atrocities in East Timor, and the Attorney General has accepted 22 of them for prosecution. They'll be the first major state prosecutions against the military and police. A watershed in the battle to assert civil supremacy against the still powerful armed forces of the old regime. If we can get a few convictions uh, early in here, then uh, this might turn the tide against them. I don't think there will be that much of a res resistance once we get some of the generals uh, really indicted and convicted more than that. Mm. That is why I told you that it is going to be difficult to convict them unless we have a more a cleaner judiciary and uh, we are doing that on the corruption side to try to get the judiciary before we can get these human rights cases to court. The legal system has now moved to the centre stage of Indonesian politics. Demonstrations are occurring not at Parliament but at the Attorney General's office. And the crowd here aren't just calling for Sahato's neck, they're targeting the justice system and its highest officers. Okay. Siapa uh, justice siapa? Oh yeah, okay. Dah. Nanti sorry. Nanti sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yo, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Attorney General Mazuki Darusman is in the centre of the storm. The public perception, of course, is that the, the, the legal system uh, has, has uh, deep-seated problems in terms of competence, in terms of professionalism and, and susceptibility to inducements. Mm. Uh, this is, it's, it's not a, a, a secret, but uh, then once you start looking into it, it's, it's not that easy to, to prove. So you're laboring under, under these kinds of conditions and you just have to make the best of it. 
but making the best of it may not be enough to ensure his survival or the survival of the civilian government. The president is looking increasingly frustrated, though. Is, is he able to achieve what he, what he wants through the law? I think he's always been uh, able to reflect the mood of the country. And, and when he goes out and to say that uh, the, the, the courts are uh, compromised and all, it, it's merely a reflection of the perception of the public. Despite having launched a dozen high-profile cases, Darusman has had only one notable victory in the courts in 12 months. Sahato's youngest son, Tommy, convicted and sentenced to prison in a watertight embezzlement case. But to the public's incredulity, he's still walking free. De Roosman is meeting with his staff, trying to ensure a prompt arrest. It would seem that the wheels of justice turn too slowly to catch any of the Sahatos. What exactly are we talking about here? Judges and prosecutors, are we? Or? Prosecutors, prosecutors. Most, his, his own prosecutors. So Those are under him. His staff, the Attorney General staff. You see, because the Attorney General staff, you should know, has been one of the most uh, corrupt officers also in Indonesia. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We are now just concentrating on the justices, but I've always reminded them, you can't have a very corrupt judiciary here without a corrupt prosecutors, without corrupt uh, legal defendants, all these lawyers. So it's not just the judges that no, uh, are no, concerned? No, no, no. The judges are the people who finally hand the verdict. But you have had this whole system where people have been, uh, you know, selling, not justice, but selling verdicts. So, for the Attorney General, his problem starts in his own... Uh... Very much so, very much so. You should know that he doesn't sit in his office so much because he doesn't trust most of the people around him anyway. And this office was uh, uh, electronically eavesdropped, you know, his predecessor. This, this, I mean, this is extraordinary, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. That's why you see me, who has nothing to do with the Attorney General's office, being with him almost every couple of days and all that. Um, what does uh, what did his staff uh, think of him or having to work for him and having to prosecute cases? Uh? I don't think most of the staff like him because uh, what you should by this time realize that most of the government officials, most of the bureaucracy do not want things to change a wee bit. They want, as the Rizal used to say, they don't know the party is over. They want the party to continue. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General is facing more than just an explosion of demonstrations. A month ago, his office was bombed. The bombing at Darusman's office occurred after Dillon's Human Rights Commission delivered to him the case files dealing with atrocities in East Timor. To the surprise of the military and members of his own department, Darusman announced that prosecutions would follow. The prosecutors in uh, uh, the Attorney General's office have never really seriously dealt with the gross violations of human rights. And uh, neither are they very happy doing this because there is nothing in it for them. And if anything, they could get a bullet in their heads. Eh? So I think that uh, bomb that was detonated in uh, the AG's office was just meant to send them a warning, you know, don't play around with us. In the past three months, there have been 13 blunt warnings across Jakarta. 
Virtually every bomb blast on the eve of a Sahato trial or after the announcement of legal investigations against military figures. <laughs> This blast at the Jakarta Stock Exchange was the most outrageous. 30 injured, 15 killed, nearly all of them drivers simply waiting by their cars. Another complete mystery according to the police. The president had to sack the police chief to force an investigation. The arrest that followed netted the two main suspects, arrested in civilian clothes, but who turned out to be explosive experts from a special forces unit of the army. Do you believe the military was officially involved in the, the bombing at the Stock Exchange? Uh, elements of the military have been, have been established to, 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 to have been involved in this. <coughs> This is an incredible situation where you've got your own military that are bombing and destabilizing the government. <coughs> uh, yes, well, I mean, we're still going through the transition period. But uh, all in all, the military are under control. It's Under control? It is under control. But they're, they're bombing. They're, they're but uh, there are elements that... Uh, I mean, the military as an institution is under control and uh, it's definitely following the... Uh, politics of the government, but you, you still have these kinds of incidents happening because of uh, dissatisfaction, pockets of, of uh, dissatisfaction within the military also. Today, Darusman is driving into the heart of those pockets of dissatisfaction. At the presidential palace, the new commanders of the armed forces are being sworn in. How do you feel being uh, around the military yourself now? Do you, do you trust these people or not? Uh, they're good, basically they're good. 70% are good. 30% are deadly? Yeah, 80% are good. <laughs> it's just the, some of them that, are, that need to be sort of uh, shunted aside. Yeah? <laughs> and will that happen? That will happen, that will happen, that will happen, I'm soon gonna... enough. But it won't happen today, and probably not soon enough to save the presidency of Abdurrahman Wahid, Indonesia's first democratically elected president in more than three decades. It's a humiliating day for the ailing president. Fifty generals virtually threatened a coup if Wahid went ahead with his choice of appointing a well-known reformer as the army's new chief of staff. The army got their man and Wahid's presidency dealt yet another blow. At his side stands a vice president who is busily courting the military to ensure her ascendancy and their survival. The President and his Attorney General face a Herculean task in the coming months in their legal showdown with the military. All they have to rely on for support is the law and the courts, and that's not much. The Army Chief of Staff departing today has the honour of being one of the prime suspects in a counterfeit currency ring and under his command, the army are suspected of bombing the Attorney General's office and the stock exchange. There's a series of bombings um, here though and the, the army stands accused This of is that. not a good time for, for me, okay? Thank when is, when is uh, a good time, sir? No, no. Uh, okay. His replacement appears unfazed by the challenges that lie ahead. Sir, yes, sir. The, 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 army, the reputation of the army has taken a serious blow in recent months with accusations that they're behind a terror and bombing campaign. No, it's just uh, two soldiers, you know. Just two soldiers? Just two soldiers who killed ten men and uh, wounded twenty others? No. It's just two soldiers who get the link with, with the... Uh, Aceh Merdeka, hmm. and then, of course, because they are also Acehnese, so uh, they have a relation with the 
very uh, a celebration. They also, also have a relation with the army, though. This must be extreme. No, he is a, a soldier. But he is a soldier. Well, are you taking this seriously? I mean, if this is the army that is bombing the state... <laughs> <it's> an... <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, they are member, one of the members of the army, but not the army. Many people exploded. accuse the army of being involved in this, in this, this type of destabilising activity. Are you going to take any action uh, against, uh, yeah. uh, on these accusations? Uh, well, I think uh, we have to, to do that, yes. But are you going to remove officers who you suspect are engaged... The officers. Are you going to remove officers who you suspect are engaged in acts against the state? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, well, I don't care what is the rank of them. If they did some things not correctly or indisciplinary, then I will, I will, of course, uh, well, to do some things to them. Yeah, a sanction for them. A sanction. A sanction. Yes. Mm. Mm. Do you have any immediate plans? Well, not, not for the time being, because I just uh, took over and, uh, you know. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> a commander with enough stomach would have plenty to investigate in this room alone. Multi-millionaire generals, career torturers and a few modern-day bombers. But for now, the biggest threat to this group is the Attorney General and his list of 22 accused of atrocities in East Timor. If those cases succeed, there'll be thousands more to follow from within Indonesia, if they succeed. Jakarta Police Headquarters. The police are in a quandary. On a presidential order, they have arrested a notorious East Timor militia leader. A judge has just overturned the order and a release is expected any moment. But the surprise on this day is not to see the militia leader walk out of police headquarters, but another of the 22 accused by the Attorney General of criminal atrocities in East Timor. And he didn't walk out of a cell, but from his executive office. So okay. you, can still, you can be on that list and still work uh, in the civil service, obviously, yeah? Timbal Salayan, the former chief of police in East Timor, is awaiting prosecution for his complicity in acts of torture and mass murder. Not only is he still serving, he's been promoted to a rather surprising position. So what's your job now, sir? Just briefly, what's your job now? Director Pidana Corruption. The man accused of collusion with the most corrupt elements of the Indonesian army and the old regime is now in charge of the unit meant to be investigating them. Okay, yeah, see you. Bye. The strength of the PRD case is that it doesn't rely on police investigators to get it to court, nor on government prosecutors to conduct the case. It's a private action and the only barrier is the wisdom and judgment of three men. The case is adjourned with judgment as to whether the trial can proceed to be given at a later date. But with neither witnesses or evidence being heard, the gallery make a judgment of their own.
pakai foto bayaran Whatever the result in this case, the PRD and others will be back with more civil cases. The trials of the justice system are not over yet. Yeah.